All right, so uh, welcome back to the second part of, uh, of Oliver's talk. Okay, um, so like in the two row, in this three row rectangular setting, uh, we had our standard monomial basis that was sort of, uh, uh, sort of came out of things very nicely, very generally, um, but didn't have a lot of the combinatorial properties that we wanted. And then we were able to find instead these special web bases that uh, don't exist in general, uh, but they do exist in these cases. And when they do exist, they're really nice. And I'm gonna say that in the pennant setting, there's also something really nice that's like a lot like a web basis. And uh, well, here's what's going on. So I'm gonna think about uh, completely arbitrary matrices of uh, variables now. Uh, this is D by N matrices of distinct indeterminates. And now instead of looking at uh, invariance of like SLD, uh, I have to restrict to like a parabolic subgroup of SLD. It's like a really big parabolic subgroup. Uh, it just has like in the first two rows, I have these uh, zeros that are forced. So I'm gonna think about invariance of, of this group. So this is acting you know, on the left here, I'm just multiplying. And I wanna know which things show up. And again, like invariant theory tells me uh, what's going on here. I can write down generators. So one thing that's invariant under the action of P is all the D by D, the, the full rank, the, the biggest possible uh, minors you could think about. But another thing that's invariant are, are some of the two by two minors, not all the two by two minors, but the two by two minors that are sitting at the top, the two by two minors that use the top two rows of, of my matrix of variables. And okay, so it, it's generated by these two things. So it has like two different kinds of Flickr variables. Um, and, and what this is corresponding to, like this is the homogeneous coordinate ring uh, for a two-step flag variety. And it's not, it's almost like a completely general two-step flag variety, except uh, my first my first step uh, has to be two planes. So I'm looking at, I have some fixed n-dimensional uh, vector space, and I'm looking at two planes in my n-dimensional vector space contained in some uh, d-dimensional planes sitting inside my n-dimensional vector space. I mean, d is sort of controlling how tall my flagpole gets. So, so I've gone from Grassmannians uh, to this special case of two-step flag varieties. And this is, I think, like uh, the key thing that kept me confused for so many years was I was expecting to tell this story on a Grassmannian always. And uh, that's the wrong place to go. It lives here instead. Okay, so the, the, the thing is like, uh, if I pluck or embed, uh, this two-step flag variety, I think of it as living in a product of two projective spaces. So uh, I have these, the D by D miners are giving me plucker variables on, on one of these projective spaces. My top justified two by two miners are giving me the plucker variables on the other projective space. So I have a bit of a two different, uh, my grading is more complicated because I have two different kinds of variables. Okay. so. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm supposed to think about like all products of D by D minors and top justified two by two minors, uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to think about products where I use exactly one D by D minor and then a whole bunch of two by two minors, top justified two by two minors. And, and it's not like, you shouldn't like uh, see that this is the right thing to look at, but this is a very nice case just to think about these particular uh, Looker variable because I'm looking at uh, you know, this is some line bundle here. This is like uh, you know, like this is a O of one on uh, one of one of my projective spaces, and this is like O of k minus one on on the other one, and I'm tensoring them and, and stuff. Um, and again, like I have this torus uh, acting on on my big matrix of variables, it's scaling all the columns of this big matrix of variables. And uh, let's make the numbers work out so that I can think about this all ones weight space again. So now I'm gonna think about products of minors where I take one huge uh, minor that's as big as possible and a whole bunch of two by two minors 
uh, with the property that among all these miners, every column of my matrix uh, gets visited exactly once. So either it gets visited in the big miner or it gets visited in one of my two by two miners. And uh, okay, so this is some, some space of polynomials again. Um, okay, the definition is a little bit complicated, but it is completely explicit. And uh, these polynomials uh, are the spec module. They're the spec module for this pennant shape. And uh, you, know, you can write them down. And the action of the symmetric group is permuting the columns of your matrix still. So permuting the subscripts on your variables and all that. So, so standard monomial theory is still telling you a basis for this space. It has a basis given by standard Young tableau of the appropriate shape uh, of your pennant shape. So you get some kind of uh, object like this. Uh, you have your big flagpole, one, two, three, six, eight, ten. That tells me take the six by six minor using columns one, two, three, six, eight, and ten. That's that's this thing. And then I have my my flaggy parts of my pennant over here, and uh, that's telling me to take uh, a two by two minor, and not just any two by two minor, take columns four and five, uh, and rows one and two. I'm going to take the top two rows, that's this, and then take this one that's column seven, nine, and the top two rows again. That's this thing over here. So this is some like very large polynomial. Uh, this is the polynomial that corresponds to this, and their basis, their basis elements of the spec module. Okay. But again, like this is not a good basis. If I uh, if I act by basically any uh, permutation, uh, I'm permuting the numbers inside this tableau, and it becomes kind of terrible and all sorts of things. And, and instead, uh, there's a different basis that uh, I'm going to tell you about. This is like the main main result of our project. Is that there's something like a web basis. So uh, for the spec module. Uh, if I look at the set of non-crossing partitions uh, with a certain number of blocks and with no singleton size blocks, all the blocks have size at least two, uh, these are again a basis for this spec module. So I have pictures like this. And uh, again, the, the long cycle is going to act in a way you can understand, like up to up with some signs that I'm you know, hiding. Uh, you, just, you just spin this thing around. Okay? And the uh, reflection is just uh, doing W naught for you. So uh, there's a lot of uh, names here. Like I guess I sort of I like counted stuff. And uh, so what what Brendan Rhodes did was he he built the spec module like not out of polynomials. He built it like with his bare hands. He said like let's take the C linear span of these diagrams, and then he like guessed rules. He said like if I want to act on this diagram by this permutation, uh, the answer is this thing that I guessed. And then uh, many pages of like calculations to make sure that this is actually an SN action. And then many more pages of calculations to make sure this is the spec module that you were hoping it would be. And it's all kind of amazing and magical. Um, and somehow, like, I mean, that's great, but it, it that seems to come out of nowhere. And so like, what I want to do is make it uh, very explicit, like define this uh, basis sort of sitting in nature, this, this representation in nature. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually write down uh, for every one of these, we're going to find an appropriate uh, invariant polynomial uh, such that the action is something you can understand. There's a, a very recent work now of Brendan Rhodes and Jesse Kim, uh, where they, again, find the spec module uh, sort of in nature. They find it uh, living inside a fermionic uh, co-invariant ring. Sorry, a, a diagonal co-invariant ring. So the diagonal co-invariant story, like is this like uh, Garcia, Heyman, Perchese uh, story with all sorts of amazing things coming out of it. And, and they think about this fermionic version where you have a uh, skew commuting variables and uh, inside they find this uh, spec module. Uh, and the basis that comes out of that story is somehow like this non-crossing partition basis. Um, I don't understand how, how their story is related to our story, but next week, uh, Jessica and Brendan and I will uh, all be at a BAMF workshop together. And so maybe we'll understand uh, how these two stories play into each other. Okay, so uh, I'm running out of time, but let me, let me quickly tell you like 
what polynomials do you write down? So I'm getting a polynomial for every set partition. It doesn't have to be non-crossing. The non-crossing ones are going to be a basis, but I have a polynomial in general. So I take some kind of uh, picture like this. I have all these blocks, I have this thing, blocks, no singletons. And uh, my polynomial is going to be a sum over some kind of tableau. Uh, we call these Reiner Shimazono tableau because that's where we found them. I'm not sure if they existed earlier. They're, they're tableau that look like this. They like have uh, not so many conditions on them. They look kind of like Swiss cheese. Um, it's OK. Um, what we're going to do is for each column of this funny switch to tableau, uh, we're going to, which is each block of this picture over here, we're going to write down a minor. Um, but something really weird is going on. So here I have a block of size four, a block of size four, a block of size two. Um, I'm going to take a minor of size four, a minor of size four, and a minor of size two. That doesn't look like it lives in the correct space. I was supposed to be thinking about things of pennant shape. There's supposed to be one really big minor times a bunch of two by two minors. So it looks like it's in the wrong place. In fact, it is in the wrong place. And, and even worse, like this four by four minor is not using the top four rows of my matrix. So it's not even the right kind of thing. It's like not a Plicker variable. And this one's also not a plucker. Uh, the little one is. Okay, so like I'm taking the wrong kinds of things and the wrong sizes and I'm multiplying them together. Um, it just seems very bad. Uh, but the point is, I don't just take one of these. I'm going to take uh, there's a bunch of tableau associated to my set partition, like this sort of ways of shuffling these boxes around. And uh, for each one of them, I write down one of these polynomials. And the polynomials don't independently live in my spec module. But when I add them all up, uh, then they do, and they do. And so this uh, sum here, I claim, is uh, an element of my spec module. And so how do you see this? Well, uh, there's some kind of strange relation uh, that these polynomials satisfy, it's some sort of way of moving your block sizes around. So it doesn't change the number of blocks, but it does change how big they are. And so you can take your thing where you have blocks of sort of the wrong sizes and use this recurrence, which is some sort of uh, amazing fact about determinants uh, to like gradually rewrite things in terms of diagrams where you really do have one big block and then a bunch of pairs. So you can take one of these things and write it as a linear combination of things that do obviously live uh, in the appropriate Schwecht module. And if you take this big relation, you can specialize it to a rule for uncrossing things. And so you can then uh, take one of your crossing diagrams and, and use this rule to gradually rewrite it as a linear combination of things that don't cross. And that shows you that the, uh, the non-crossing diagrams are, are spanning, the, the polynomials for non-crossing things are spanning your set, and there's the right number of them, as we already know, so they, they're a basis of this thing. Okay, so, so let me just sort of try to like sum up where the story is. So like for every set partition, you have one of these uh, polynomials invariant on this parabolic, and if you look at the non-crossing ones, like those are a linear basis. And now you can understand like really what the SN action is. It's just like take the things, take the points around your circle and, and literally permute them. Uh, like take the variables of your polynomials and just permute them. And so you can like uh, actually compute all sorts of things now. You don't have to like undo these crossing rules one at a time. You just write down your polynomial and you, you want to expand it in your basis of polynomials, which you just like do by triangularity. So it becomes like much more computable. And, and you can understand things like uh, these enumerative questions we cared about to begin with, like symmetry classes of uh, set partitions. Okay. So, so homework, homework for everyone before you go away. Uh, like some of this is a uh, story just about spec modules so far, but there should, be, there should be quantum groups in here somewhere. So someone please tell me where to put them. Uh, and once you have that, like maybe this is a pipe dream, but like, it's supposed to tell you about quantum link invariance. And I think the thing that if you, if you got anything in this way, like what you would get would be uh, for your spatial hypergraph. So you have some kind of hypergraph uh, that you think of topologically and you embed it in like the three sphere. Think about what's going on there. And there should be some kind of cluster algebra structure going on here as well, because there is in the other cases. And maybe weak evidence for this like existing is that in very old work, uh, there were some like tropical freeze diagrams and freeze diagrams are like very uh, special cluster algebras, like the easiest possible cluster algebra to think about and the tropicalization is not so bad. 
Okay, so I'd better uh, stop because I've run really long, but here's a, here's a freeze diagram for you. Well, thank you very much for a beautiful talk.